Hello, welcome to BioGrid TV. If you're new here, please subscribe and turn on the notification so you don't miss our next video. History of the Anglo-Ashanti Wars The Anglo-Ashanti Wars are a series of wars that were fought between the British and the Ashanti Empire in the 19th century. The kingdom or empire of Ashanti was renowned for its great wealth, especially in gold and other natural resources. The Dutch, French, German, and the British were among Europeans that wanted possession of this great African empire and assumed control of its wealth. The British were at the fore of this quest, and it was with them that most of the wars were fought, hence the name Anglo-Ashanti Wars. The wars would last for almost a century, making the Ashanti Empire one of the most difficult powers Europeans fought with in Africa. The First Anglo-Ashanti War The First Anglo-Ashanti War occurred as early as 1823 and lasted for eight years. The Ashanti tried to claim areas belonging to one of their tribal enemies, the Fante. The Fante occupied one of the coastal areas, which was a strategic location. At the time, the Fante relied on the British for protection against the powerful Ashanti. So, when the Ashanti tried to lay claims, the British governor, Sir Charles McCarthy, rejected their claims, turning down their attempt to negotiate. This prompted the Ashanti to attack from the Cape Coast in 1823. The Ashanti were victorious in the battle, and McCarthy was killed and his head kept as a drinking trophy. It then fell on Major Alexander Gordon Lang to take the news of the sad fate of McCarthy to Britain. The Ashanti continued to record successes in their subsequent fights against the British that in 1826, they decided again to move on the coast. When the battle began, the Ashanti again seemed to be having the upper hand, even though the British and their allied local forces had superior numbers. However, a powerful new weapon called Congreve Rocket was deployed by the British, which caused the Ashanti army to withdraw. In 1831, the Pra River was then accepted as the border in a treaty. This was followed by 30 years of peace between the Ashanti and the British. The Second Anglo-Ashanti War The Second Anglo-Ashanti War began in 1863 and lasted for just about a year. Apart from some small conflicts between 1853 and 1854, there was an unbroken peace between the Ashanti and the British for about 30 years. Then, in 1863, a large company of Ashanti crossed the Pra River, which was the agreed boundary, while pursuing a fugitive known as Kwesi Giana. This resulted in a battle with significant casualties from both sides. The British troops had to withdraw due to sickness. The Third Anglo-Ashanti War The Third Anglo-Ashanti War began in 1873, again lasting until the following year. In 1871, Britain purchased a chunk of area known as Dutch Gold Coast from the Dutch and named it their protectorate. But the Ashanti claimed the area was theirs and promptly invaded the new British protectorate. General Garnet Wolseley, with 2,500 British troops and several thousand West Indian and African troops, went out to face the Ashanti in the Battle of Amwafol on the 31st of January, 1874. The battle raged on for five days. It was a hard-fought war, with some British accounts recording the admiration of the British for the Ashanti war general, Amankwatia. One such account read, The great chief Amankwatia was among the killed. Admirable skill was shown in the position selected by Amankwatia and the determination and generalship he displayed in the defense fully bore out his great reputation as an able tactician and gallant soldier. At the end, the Ashanti fled their capital, Kumasi, which the British proceeded to burn down. The size of the king's palace and the volumes of books found there greatly impressed the British. 
the king or Asantahene of Ashanti, Kofi Karikari, was forced to sign a stiff treaty to end the war. The treaty required the king to pay 50,000 ounces of approved gold to cover for the cost of the war to the British. The treaty also required unhindered access to trade routes and freedom of trade. The Fourth Anglo-Ashanti War The Fourth Anglo-Ashanti War was quite brief, lasting for only three months from December 1895 to February 1896. Trouble started to brew when the young Ashanti king, Primpe, refused an offer to become a British protectorate in 1891. His response was this, My kingdom of Ashanti will never commit itself to any such policy of protection. Ashanti people and the kingdom of Ashanti must remain an independent sovereign state as of old and at the same time be friends with all white men. It eventually blew over in 1895. The British wanted to keep the French and German forces away from the Ashanti territory and its wealth in gold, so they were eager to conquer the Ashanti once and for all. The British came up under the pretext that the previous Ashanti king did not pay the fines that were levied against him after the war in 1874. In December 1895, the British left Cape Coast with a troop which arrived in Kumasi in January 1896. Though initially ready to fight, the Asantehene instructed his people not to fight, fearing for their safety. Britain then took possession of the Ashanti territory and Asantehene Prempe was deposed and arrested. He, along with other Ashanti leaders, were exiled to seashells. However, the British lost several men to diseases that period, including Queen Victoria's son-in-law, Prince Henry of Battenberg. The Fifth Anglo-Ashanti War, that is, War of the Golden Stool. The final war between the British and the Ashanti is called the War of the Golden Stool. It took place from 1900 to 1901. The British had demanded for the Golden Stool which was the most sacred symbol of the Ashanti people. However, the Queen Mother, Ya Asantewa, mobilized the chiefs and soldiers to fight to defend their most treasured and sacred symbol. Unfortunately, as bold and courageous as she was, Ya Asantewa and her forces were finally defeated in 1901, and she, along with other Ashanti leaders, were captured and exiled to seashells. Because of her role in the war, it is also referred to as the Ya Asantewa War. The golden stool, however, was not found by the British as it had been carefully hidden. This was the last war between the British and the Ashanti, marking the end of a century-long battle for supremacy. What have we missed out of this history? Let's know in the comment section. Will it be ridiculous to subscribe to our channel? If no, please like this video, share and subscribe to our channel.